Welcome to week five, second lecture. So now that we have uh, figured out how to represent consumers' preferences under uncertainty, uh, we are ready to figure out uh, his optimal choice. Uh, as you must recall from uh, the past applications of indifference curve and using indifference curve and budget constraint uh, to figure out the optimal choice, uh, we would basically pick a point where the slope of the indifference curve is equal to the slope of the budget constraint. We have already figured out the slope for the budget constraint. Let's figure out what is the slope of the indifference curve where on the x-axis uh, you have consumption uh, when there is uh, an accident and on the y-axis there is consumption when there is uh, no accident. And the utility curves basically are drawn for, for a given uh, level of expected utility which is uh, nothing but weighted average of utilities of individual outcomes. All right, so one thing that we know is that if utility is constant, then I can, so on an indifference curve, I can change the combination of C1 and C2, and there would be no change in utility. So if D is change in utility, on a single indifference curve, if I move up and down, the change in utility is zero. So we're going to use this fact to figure out what's the uh, slope of the indifference curve. So expected utility is given by this line. Uh, what you basically do is take the total derivative uh, of this function. Now what do we mean by that? It means that we take a small change in C1 and see how does the marginal utility change because of that. And of course, you will have to multiply that with the probability of this outcome occurring. Similarly, uh, a small change in C2, uh, what is the change uh, marginal utility at that particular point multiplied by the uh, probability of the event occurring. So this here is basically uh, the weighted average of marginal utilities that you can expect when you change consumption uh, in period one or in state one uh, by one unit or consumption in state two by one unit. And as we saw here, this total change should be zero if we stay on uh, the same indifference curve because uh, the utility, total expected utility is constant there. So that is a fact that we use. Uh, we say that uh, this sum here is equal to DEU. Uh, D is again change. It is uh, because here we are representing a very small minute change. We write it as D. Usually uh, you, you must be uh, familiar with the idea of delta as the change. So you can think of this as delta as well. So uh, moving on an indifference curve doesn't change the total utility. Therefore, this sum here, which is nothing but the weighted average of marginal utilities multiplied by the changes that we have, should be equal to zero. Once we see that, we just uh, solve for uh, the slope. We know that the slope is going to be change in C2 divided by change in C1 because that's exactly what we are looking at uh, on the axis. So if this is rise and this is run. The slope is rise over run, which is going to be equal to negative of uh, marginal utility from changing consumption in state one multiplied by the probability divided by marginal utility of changing consumption in state two multiplied by its probability. So the slope of the indifference curve is again the ratio of marginal utilities as you uh, must have seen before. The only difference here is that we multiply uh, these marginal utilities by the probability of state one occurring and or basically the probability of that particular state offering. So it's a neat transformation of the same formula just we recognize here that uh, these events are probabilistic. They don't occur with certainty. 
now that we have uh, what is the uh, how do we find the slope uh, we are just going to use that for our example the state one is basically uh, consumption when there is an accident state two is consumption when there is no accident uh, this is rise this is run so the slope of the indifference curve is going to be rise over run which is change in consumption when there is no accident divided by change in consumption when there is an accident and that would be equal to marginal utility of change in uh, consumption when there is an accident multiplied by the probability of accident occurring divided by marginal utility of change in consumption when there is no accident multiplied by probability of uh, not having an accident which is nothing but 1 minus pi a so that is the slope so now uh, we from the last week's lecture we have slope of the from this lecture we have slope of the indifference curve all that we need to do is put these together to figure out the optimal choice let's do that so how is rational choice made under uncertainty answer is going to be choose the most preferred affordable state contingent consumption plan so you can just see that we are changing the language according to what goods we are making choice over but the principle is same choose a point which is affordable as well as reaches the maximum uh, uh, or the indifference curve with the maximum height so let's say this is here a uh, state contingent budget constraint remind yourself of what it actually represents uh, this is the endowment point uh, L is the loss so if there is an accident M minus L is going to be your endowment for the first period uh, or basically in this state and for the state where no accident is there M is going to be your endowment so this is your endowment point uh, when I express uh, consumption in non-accident state as uh, uh, in terms of consumption in the accident state, uh, this is the equation I get. So this here is the intercept and uh, this is the slope. Where gamma is the price of insurance uh, of a dollar. So where is the most preferred state contingent consumption plan? So now the plan should be affordable. That's the first property that we have. So all these plans are affordable. All right, so I could click a point here. I could select a point here. The question is that if the indifference curves, when I juxtapose indifference curves uh, on this particular diagram, I know that I, when I go up, I get higher utility. So even though I could select any bundle in this green area, I'm not going to stop there because there'll be another indifference curve which is reachable. So where will I stop? Exactly at this point. Because if I try to go up, uh, it is not basically going to be affordable. So any movement is going to stop here. And that's exactly the definition of equilibrium. In equilibrium, you do not have an incentive to move or there is no way of improving your situation any further. So that is your most preferred affordable plan. So you have this as endowment, but you want to reach here, right? So the question is, uh, how do you do that? So that is the slope of the budget constraint which is equal to the slope of the indifference curve. Now, if you remember from uh, the last week's lecture, the slope of the budget constraint is gamma divided by one minus gamma. Gamma is the price of a dollar worth of insurance, which we just put equal to pi A divided by pi NA and uh, ratio of marginal utilities, which is the slope of the indifference curve. We just figured it out. The question is, this is my endowment and I want it to be here. The only way that can happen is if I figure out 
some way of uh, covering my losses in a situation where I am in an accident and paying for that coverage uh, from the endowment that would be available to me uh, in the case of not being in an accident. So basically you are buying here uh, insurance to even out consumption. So here consumption uh, smoothing takes place across states and not periods. So uh, you would buy insurance such that the consumption in the non-accident period and consumption in the accident state uh, would be more or less equal. Okay. So let's figure out what is the amount of insurance that you would buy. But before we do that, uh, uh, let's, uh, I suggest you do the second quiz and uh, then go on uh, to the third video. Thank you.